I have created an account. Maybe I'll save the password. Um, so now I will wait another minute for everyone else to create an account. When you've created an account, you can let us know in the chat or not, but I'll wait one more minute for people to finish creating an account on BetaWiki. Great job, Jeji. Thank you for letting us know. Hey, Taji. How are you doing? Um, I'm very well. Thank you. As well. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you as well. <laughs> well done okay. on the job so far. Yeah. So now I will continue. Um, yay. Thank you, Edwin, for letting us know. Um, and again, if anyone has any problems, that's totally fine and normal. Just ask a question in the chat and we can help you. So next we're creating an event page. So what's unique about this is we're creating an event page in the event namespace. Um, so you, some of you may be familiar with what a namespace is. So the way you can tell that something is a namespace is, is this format. There's a word like event, or it could be something else like special you might've seen. And then there's a colon, which is those two dots, one at the top and one at the bottom. That means a namespace. So we'll be creating event pages in the new event namespace. This is a namespace that is, um, included in wikis that have our campaign events extension enabled. It's not all wikis automatically right now. So for now, we have the extension enabled on beta wiki. That's why we're testing on beta wiki. Um, so we'll be doing it there. So to do this as a step one, go to the search bar. And I'll also show demo how to do this after we go over these steps. Step two, type in event colon name of events. So remember, this is your event. It's a test event. So you can call it anything you want. You can call it best edit-a-thon ever. You can call it my events, but it should just be a unique name. If it's a name that's already, uh, you know, an, a, a page in the event name space, you'll have to pick something else, of course, like any other wiki page, but you can just pick any name this is your test event. And then you'll see the red link, like this right here, events, my colon, my edit-a-thon. And you click on the red link to create a page. So in other words, this is how you create any other wiki page, right? That being the easiest way to do it is you search for the name. It tells you the name hasn't been used yet. It hasn't, the page hasn't been created yet. So you click on the red link to create it. So now I'll demo how to do it on BetaWiki. So let's get out. So I'm on BetaWiki. I'm going to go event and I'll call it editathon five. It tells me there's no event called editathon five. So I click on the red link. And now it brings me to this page, which is you, you, many of you are probably familiar with, it's the editor. So I will wait for everyone to get to this step for another minute and then I'll continue. Hello, Ferdinand. Hello, Nixon.
Okay, next. Um, so now that you are in the editor, you're going to create your event page. In real life, for some of you who are familiar with creating event pages, there's a lot that goes into it, right? There's probably a lot of text. You might use a template. You might add a lot of images. We're just creating a very quick and fake <laughs> event page. This isn't a real one. So I'm just going to write some very quick text. But of course, in real life, you would write more than what I'm going to write. Um, but we're just going to write and save changes. So I could be like, I could write something like, join and welcome to people who just joined the call. Join our edit-a-thon to create and improve articles about Hollywood films. So maybe that's my edit-a-thon events. So, um, you know, I could, you can write whatever you want. So then I will click publish. And now don't just stay right here. <laughs> don't click anything. We'll just wait for people to continue. And for people who just joined um, and would like to follow along, um, if you miss some of the steps, uh, you can read our documentation. And let me also make these slides available to everyone on the internet. Thank you. Okay. So you can check out our slides if you would like to follow along. Um, and let me also share our documentation on MediaWiki. So everyone should be here now. If you are not, uh, take a minute to get here. If you don't know how to get here, uh, you can go and follow some of the steps that we just went over. And the slides, it would be 2.1 and 2.2. I will continue now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable registration on the page. So you'll see that there's two buttons. One says dismiss, one says enable registration. Click on enable registration. Do not click dismiss. But if you accidentally click dismiss, it's okay. This is what you do. If you accidentally click dismiss, you'll see a link in the header to enable registration. Which is this right here. So if you click dismiss, see this right here, this button, click here, and you can also go to enable registration. So this is the page that you want to see at the end. So it'll be special enable registration, but it will have also your particular event. So mine, remember, is editathon five in the URL. And welcome newcomers. If you just joined, um, I will share the link to our slides again. We are on slide eight, but feel free to take your time and go at your own pace and ask questions in the chat. So now what I am going to do I hear some background noise from someone. Okay. 
is that we are going to continue the process of enabling registration. So this means we are enabling registration for the event page we created. So to do that, we fill out the form with event information. Remember, this is a test event. It's not a real event. So you can fill out any information you want. Then when you're done, you click enable registration and then you review changes. So let's do this together. Oops. <laughs> so I go here. I'm going to say that my edit-a-thon starts on Monday and it ends on Thursday of next week. For times, um, I'll, leave, I'll leave his times here. Maybe I'll just make it zero. Um, now, one thing to note is this says Z. Z means UTC. This is a bug in MediaWiki, which uh, we plan to look into getting fixed. We don't want this to be the permanent state. Uh, we just wanted to deliver something or ship something quickly, get something released quickly so you all could test it. But this is something that we want to fix in the future. So in the future, it wouldn't say Z, it would say UTC. Also in the future, we want you to be able to pick your time zone. So for example, I'm in New York. In the future, I would be able to have it not be in UTC, but to be in EST, my time zone, if I want it. But for now, this is what we have. This is an example of how we are in V0, but we plan to make further improvements in other versions later. And V0 stands for version zero. But for now, um, I'll just do this, that it goes, let's make it at noon. So it's going from the 25th to the 28th of July at 12 noon. Now you can pick if it's an online event, in-person event, or a hybrid event, which would be an online and in-person event. I'll say it's a hybrid event. It's both online and in-person. So in that case, I'll add the meeting URL. So this is just a test meeting URL. Um, and really what's going on here is this is something like a Google Meet invite. It could be, for example, this call, a Zoom Meet invite. Then we add a country. I'm in the United States, so I'll add the United States. Um, I'm going to add now an address. Um, this is, of course, a test, so I'll just add a fake address. 50 Jones Street, uh, New York. New York. And then I'll add the group chat invite. So this is something like a Telegram group, a WhatsApp group. Um, many events, as you all know, have chat groups on external platforms associated with them where people can talk about what's going on either before, during, or after the event. This could also be a chat group if you're part of an affiliate or a chapter or a user group. Uh, so this is where you'd add that information. And now I click enable registration. Once I do that, I see the success message. Registration is enabled. Participants can now register on the event page. And this is a link to my event page. So I click here. And voila, <laughs> we now see that there's a header at the top. It has the information. But the start time and end time, start date, end date. It has the address. It has also the information on how to join. No, I see this information on the how, how to join with the Google Meet link because I'm the organizer. Um, but we'll show how things work a little differently if you're a participant, which is that before you join, you don't see the join link. After you register as a participant, you see the join link. Um, and it says manage event here because I'm the organizer. If I wasn't the organizer, then it would say register for event. So now we'll wait for people to finish this process for one more minute. I talked about a lot, so feel free to add your questions in the chat if you have any.
Tochi wrote, I can't find where to enable registration. I'm not sure I saw the pop up. Okay, so I'll go over the process again of how to enable registration. So I'll create a new event. So the way to do it, remember, is if I just create any page, like let's say I do just general, I'm creating this page, test one, two. This is not in the event namespace. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't allow me to enable registration. This is just any old event page, right? It just says test one, two, three. For me to create an event in the event namespace, which is the first step, I have to do event colon, so the two dots, and then I write the event. So if my event is called, let's say, history edit a thought, see how it says event colon history edit a thought. Yes, uh, for who is asking. So we use the word event um, and side note. Uh, eventually, this will be translated into other languages, but for now, we haven't gotten the translation yet for the namespace name. So no matter what language you're currently testing in, use the word event, like how I spelled it here, E-V-E-N-T. So here's my example. I did E-V-E-N-T colon, and then history edit a thought. So I can create my page. Um, welcome to our edit-a-thon that focuses on ancient, let's say, Egyptian history. Please join us. So again, event colon, and then the name of my edit-a-thon. Then I click publish. Now we see the link that says enable registration. I have two options here. I can click here and that brings me to the form for enable registration. Or if I'm on my event page, see this button here, enable registration? I can click that and it will also take me to the form. So, um, for people who had trouble doing it the first time, please try again this time. And if you can, let me know in the chat if it works better for you this time. That would be much appreciated. So I'll wait one more minute. And I will look at what... We have a few more questions in the chat. Is it possible I'm translating? Oh, great. So we see one comment. It worked on my side perfect from Edwin. Thank you. That's great to hear. Um, I see one comment. Um, is it possible to follow several events uh, from this wiki? Um, Follow several events. If you mean, is it possible to create multiple event pages and add registration to multiple events? Yes, that you can do that. Um, right now we have one registration per event page, but we will probably look into the future of how to make it more sophisticated. Um, so you can have maybe, you know, register for multiple dates per event. Next question, can you add more event organizers or is it only the one created on the page? Great question. Um, so for the next release, which we're calling V1, which stands for version one, uh, we are working on being able to add more organizers. So I'll also type the answer in the chat, which is for V0, there is only one organizer per event. But for our next release, uh, V1, there can be multiple organizers. Um, and we don't know exactly when V1 will be released, but we're planning for roughly about three months. Um, so I'll now continue. And great to hear, Tachi, that it worked for you. So as a next step, 
So I'll fill out this again. So if you are on this page, fill out some basic information about your event, the start time and end time, start date and end date, if it's online, in person, or both. So I'll quickly do this again. and I click enable registration. So now I am on my event page and I've enabled registration. So for everyone who has done that, congratulations. <laughs> um, for anyone who needs help, feel free, of course, to ask your questions in the chat. So now we're going to take on a different role. So now we're going to test what it is like for participants. So up until now, everyone has been testing as an organizer. In other words, how do you create an event page as an organizer? How do you enable registration on your event page as an organizer? This next step is you as a participant. So now you're going to pretend to be an event participant who wants to register for the event. So this is how you do it. Um, so as a first step, we need to find an event that you did not create an enabled registration on. So for example, if we go back, see this is manage event. This is because um, I, I enable registration event page, I'm the organizer. So I want to find an event where I'm not the organizer. So one of the ways to do this is we need we can go to special all pages. So here how it says, I just click, I'm gonna go like this, and I'll share this link in the chat. Now there'll be easier ways in the future um, to find uh, all the events. Um, one of the reasons we have to do this is uh, normally you, you should be able to, in the search bar, go by event and it auto populates with you know all the different events in the event namespace, but there's currently a long standing, I guess, bug on beta that doesn't allow you to do this. <laughs> so this is the workaround. Um, another thing too, is that in the future, I will also have an event calendar, but we don't um, have that built yet. So this is a workaround. So what I do is I look, see where it says your namespace, we're searching by namespace. There's all these different namespaces. So for me, I scroll down. Unfortunately, it doesn't look to be in alphabetical order, but under a translations talk, there's event. I go here and I'll share this link as well for people who want to go directly to the link. And these are all the events that have been created so far. Maybe some of you see the event that you created here. Um, so I can go to some of these events. Let's try Igbo Edit-a-thon. Let's see if that has, yep, it has registration enabled. And this is, you know, again, like any old uh, wiki page. So I can even see the history. Oh, look who created it. Okay. So I can go ahead and register for the Igbo Edit-a-thon. So the way I do it is I just click this button here, register for event. Now, one bug we need to fix, which will happen soon, <laughs> is uh, right now when you register, you have to refresh the page in order to see your name. So now I see my name. I registered as Talia here. Um, but in the future, we're gonna fix this bug so it automatically updates. Um, so I'll show this process again. So I'm on the page, I click register for but event, this button here, and now it says you are now registered for Igbo Edit-a-thon, and I refresh the page. And now it says there's one person, oh, now there's two. We have two people who've registered. If anyone else wants to register for this event, I'll share the URL in the chat. Um, I'll pick another event to register for now so people can see. So I'm gonna go back to the event pages. 
Let's try this one right here. Register for events, refresh. And I'm now joined. If you like to join this event, I'll also share the link. So these are two events that people can test out registering for. So again, the steps are you search for the event pages in general, or you can go to one of these, one of these two events that I shared. You can also register for the event that I created a while back which is, which one was my event? Here's my history edit-a-thon. Let's see if I, anyone signed up. No one signed up for my event yet. <laughs> Someone signed up for my event. So um, pick an event and then click register for event and then refresh to be able to see that you're attending. I'm going to look at some of these events, see if, let's see if anyone's registered for my event now. I feel so unpopular. No one's registering for mine. <laughs> let's look at some of these others. Oh, well, this one has three now. That's great. How about the Igbo one? Four. Okay. So people are registering. That is great to see. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in the chat. Now, one thing you may have noticed when you register is it's very simple, right? You just pick, you just click on the register button. There, is, there aren't any questions like, why are you joining the events? Or maybe demographic questions are things you might want to ask as an organizer, like the gender of the participant, or if they're involved in any chapters or affiliates or user groups. So we know people want to ask these questions as organizers. We're just going to work on this a little later on. So in V1, which is the upcoming release, we're going to be doing some more basic stuff to improve things like communication and integration with the dashboard. Um, and then in V2, we're going to be looking into how we can have the organizers ask questions of participants as optional questions. Um, we have one question in the chat. I hope there's a feature that will notify me if someone joined my event. Yes, great point. So right now I'll show how you as an organizer see when people joined. There isn't an automatic notification system. You just have a list. But if this is a feature that interests people, and I definitely understand why this would interest people to get some automated notification, we can look into, um, or we can have the engineers investigate how we could maybe make this possible. So as a next step, we're going to cancel registration. And I'll also write a comment back. Okay. So now to cancel registration, this is, for example, let's say I join the event, but then I realized I'm busy that day. I can't attend. So what I do is I cancel. Now it's very easy to cancel registration. So you click on the trash icon, see this red trash icon, and then you cancel your registration. Now, if you want to join the event again, it's really easy. You can click on the blue button for register for event and you join the event again. So I'll demo how this works. So now, okay, I click on this right here, this trash icon. It asks, are you sure you want to cancel your registration? You click yes. 
and now I'm no longer registered for the event. It doesn't have my name anymore and it says register for events. So that's how I remove registration. I'll demo this one more time. So now I've just joined the event again. And then I click this trash icon here. I confirm that yes, I want to cancel my registration. And then I am no longer a part of the event. So we'll give everyone one minute to test this out. And then we'll go to the next thing, the next slide. Okay, so now we are going to now go back to the organizer side. So we just showed how a participant can cancel registration. Now I'm going to show how an organizer can cancel registration. So for example, maybe you as an organizer see someone join the event and you know that they've caused problems in the past. Maybe you have a reason to think that it's not appropriate for them to join this event you can remove that. Or maybe they're having trouble removing themselves. They just contact you. They ask, hey, can you remove me from the events? I no longer want to participate. So there's many reasons why you may want to remove people. We'll show you how to do it. So you need to go back to an event you organized. So now I'm going to, oh, thank you to people who joined my event. I feel, <laughs> I feel so honored that I have eight participants. Um, so I'm going to have to remove someone, unfortunately, to demo this, but it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate everyone who joins. Um, so I'm going to show how I remove participants as an organizer. So to do that, I'm on my event page right here. I click manage event. Okay, that's one way to get to what's called your event details, right? Now, when I'm on event details, let's see, another way, I have two events here. I think this is the best way, let's do this. Okay, so now I'm on event details, so it's special, event details, and this ID here is the ID for my event. So now I want to remove a participant, okay? So to do that, I click one of the names. So I'll do, for example, Bashunda. Sorry, Bashunda, you're going away. <laughs> so I click his name and I go remove. And Bashunda is now removed from the event. So if you're having trouble accessing this page, special event details, another way you can access it is See here, special, you can go to special my events. So this is the URL. And this shows the your list of events as an organizer, okay? So I go and click the link here, history edit-a-thon. I click the name and it also brings me to event details. So there's two ways to access the page, either through the manage event button on the event page or by clicking the event name in your list of events. So again, the way that you remove someone is that you pick, you can pick one, you can pick multiple, I'm picking one. You select them. So let's show this again. You can do select all, select one, 
find this button here and remove. And it asks, are you sure you want to remove the selected participant? I say yes, and it removes them. So now I recommend that everyone tries to remove a participant from their event. If you have any problems or you're confused about anything, please ask in the chat. We'll be happy to help. Question, what if there are no participants who've signed up? Well, if there's no participants who've signed up, you don't have anyone to remove yet. This only applies if people have signed up. Um, so if there's no participants who've signed up, you're probably focused on a different part of the experience, right? As an organizer, you're probably focused more at that point in marketing, social media, getting the word out. So this step of um, removing participants, this happens after you've already had some people register. No problem. Okay, so now let's go to the next thing. Now let's talk about editing registration information. So we're going to do an edit. Now remember, this is for, uh, we're not editing the event page, we're editing the registration information, okay? So the way you do that, is we want to go to event details or my events as step one choose edit registration and then make your changes and then save your changes so now i'll demo this so i can there's two ways i can do this remember option one i go to edit on event details edit, that's option one. Option two is I go to this page right here, special my events. And then from there, I can click edit event. So these are two ways you can easily get there. Now, when you're on this page, this is where you can make changes. So I wrote 30 Jackson Road. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe it's 35 Jackson Road. So I make that change. And I'll say it's actually not in New York. I'll say it's actually in Los Angeles, California. Okay. I edit. Register or in Kampala. Okay, I'll make that change next. <laughs> um, so now I look in the details and it's now 35 Jackson Road in Los Angeles. Let's do an edit again. So now I'll go to manage events and this time I'll change the location. Okay. So We'll change a few things actually. We'll change the location, we'll change the date, we'll change the time, we'll change everything, okay? So we're gonna make it in Kampala, Uganda. We're gonna make it the, let's say, August 4th to August 15th. We'll make it one o'clock. To, let's say three o'clock. You can, we can make any changes we want, all right? Edit registration. Let's see the changes. So it's now in Kampala, Uganda. Ah, I forgot to remove the United States. That's my fault. <laughs> I'll make that change right now. 
Um, and I changed the date and the time. So let's change that. So this is how we make edits, right? Now I have see some comments in the chat. Uh, I'm liking this. It means I'll have to teach my community members how to use it as well. That's great to hear. We're so happy you like it. Um, and when you teach your community members, uh, we have documentation, we have resources, and we're also happy to provide any support. Um, another question that got sent to me directly. Uh, for me, when I log in for the test to V0, my login refuses. So if you're having trouble logging in to V0, do you mean you're having trouble logging into BetaWiki? If that's the case, you might have forgotten your password. Um, if you associate an email address with your account, you should be able to recover your password. If not, you can create a new BetaWiki account. Um, and uh, if anyone has trouble creating BetaWiki account, let me know. I can create, excuse me, in a test account for them. Um, and then they can continue testing through the test account that I create. Uh, another thing I see written, we don't use the initial identifications as our identifications on MetaPage. I'm sorry, I don't understand that. So for that question, um, for the person who wrote that, maybe they can um, give a little more explanation of what they mean. And this was a direct message to me, this question, so I will respond. Uh, next thing, how long is the beta version available? Can this already be used for live events? So right now, um, this beta version, so this is of course on beta wiki. So it's a, it's not a real wiki. It's a test. In, I mean, it's a test environment. Um, so it's, it's a wiki, but it's not like a wiki that you would use for live events. Um, so we plan to first release to probably meta wiki as the first live usable wiki. Um, in about three months. And when we do, it'll be like this, but better. It'll work better, it'll have less bugs, and it'll have more features. So in about three months time, one can expect to start being able to use this feature for their events. And in the meantime, we want to get your feedback. We want to hear what you like, what you don't like, what you want changed. We'll share at the end of the presentation how to share your feedback. So when we release the next version on a live wiki, we have some of those suggestions that you all share with us incorporated into that next version. Okay. Yeah. Mm, many locations, like multiple locations. Okay. Okay. It's a great question. Um, so uh, we plan in the future to allow multiple locations for this first version is very simple. It's the most basic, simple version because we wanted to build something small and make it bigger and more sophisticated and more dynamic over time. So in later versions, we imagine that you as an organizer can say maybe like, okay, location one is happening, let's say in San Francisco. Location two is happening in New York or location one is in Paris. Location two is in Marseille. And then you can have a more advanced setup system but that will come later. Um, so you can anticipate that in probably we're not in what we're calling V2. So V1 or version one is the one that's coming up in a few months. And then a few months after that is version two. And in version two, that's where we'll probably try to see how we can incorporate a way of having um, more than one event or location that's associated with a campaign. Thanks for that question. It's a really important one. It's what we've heard from other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Okay, all events that they joined. Yeah, yeah, totally. So right now, um, we have this page, you know, my events, but that's really for the organizer, right? It doesn't show the participant side yet, but we're talking as a team about what that means for the participant in the future, because we also would like to show a way in the future for participants to see all the events they joined. Um, we also have a project that we want to do in the future that we're calling event calendar. And the way we imagine that is you can see all the events going on, right? Um, and you can filter for different events. So you can find, I want to find all the events that are going on in Uganda, or I want to find all the events that are related to gender gap or to cinema. So you can search for different events you like. And we'd also like to be able to have you filter by events that you have joined. So this is a, fu a future project that we want to work on. Um, there's many projects we want to work on, but our dream in the future um, is that this is something that'll be available to both organizers and participants in what we're calling the event center. So it's like this general space where you as an organizer or participant can find events that interest you, join events that interest you. If you're an organizer, you can have tools to create and manage events like this tool for event registration. Another tool we want to create is event creation. So it's very easy to create event pages. And this participant will be easy to find events and see the events you joined and see the impact of the events. So this goes into this larger concept of event center that we definitely want to bit by bit, you know, take time, but bit by bit develop over time. Another question or uh, I see is, can a participant register on the day and within the time of the event, or is this kind of pre-registration process? So the way we have registration set up now is as long as the event is still going on. So let's say that I say the event ends on August 1st at 12 UTC, then registration can go until August 1st, 12 UTC, unless the organizer chooses to close registration earlier, which I think is actually the next thing I was going to demo. Yes, so I'll show how you close registration. Um, so let's say I, as an organizer, only want 20 people to join the event. Maybe the event is in a small room, we only have 20 seats. Or maybe I only want to or maybe I only want a small number of people because I think I can do a better job training people if there's less people. Uh, whatever the reason, the organizer at any point when registration is open can choose to close registration and then they can reopen registration again. Um, so I'll show how you do that. So there's two ways. You can either go to my events or edit. So if you go, I should clarify, to my events, you click on the three dots. So let's show how you do this. So again, um, I can go to edit. This is one way to go back to this view or I'm in my events. So this event is automatically open. Whenever you enable registrations, automatically open. But I can go here, close registration, and the registration is closed. If I want to open it again, I just go here and registration is open. This is one way I can open or close registration. There's a second way. So the second way is I go to edit. See how it says open here? I can now mark it as closed and save. And registration is closed. So it will still allow me to manage the event. But if you as a participant go, you will no longer be able to register if you haven't already. So for people who are already registered, their registration will remain. Their registration won't disappear. It'll stay there. I still see the people who registered, right? But new people can't register. 
Similarly, if someone who registered canceled their registration right now, they couldn't re-register because I've closed registration. The only way they'd be able to re-register is if I open registration, which I can always do if the event is still going on. So to do that again, I can go to edit and I mark it as open. And that is how I open and close registration. So now I will give everyone a minute to work on this and test it out. And while they do, I'm gonna look at some of the other questions in the chat. Uh, another question on participants or organizers. How can you differentiate online and offline participants? I just saw a bare list of participants without an indication of online or offline registration. Yes, so this is really, this is a great question. Thank you. Um, so the way we imagine this working for now is you um, as the organizer give information, let's say it's an event that's online and offline, it's both. You as the organizer give information about how to join in person and how to join online and the participant can use this information. So for example, uh, if I joined this event, well, I see the location here, right? So I can join, it's in person. Now, this event, I see the link to the Zoom call, right? Now, if I wasn't attending and I clicked more details, I don't see the link to the Zoom call. I have to join the event to see the link. So first of all, participants see this information themselves. Um, now, one change we'll make in V1 is we also are looking into how the participant can be sent a confirmation email. So if I have an e email address associated with my account, after I register for the event, I'll get an email. It'll say something like, congratulations, you have registered for the IGBO Edit-a-thon. This is the link to join. This is the time that'll happen. So we do plan to also offer more information and notification to participants. Um, on the organizer side though, your question I think is going into what we're planning to do for V2. So for version two, which roughly we're planning for about six months or so, remember version one, three or so months, so version two, about six or so months, we want the organizers to be able to ask questions of participants and get more information of participants. So we know some organizers want to know about participants' professional backgrounds. Some want to know about, you know, if they're a student or a worker or what their gender is. And some people might want to know things like, are you joining online? Are you joining in person? Do you need help with transportation? Do you need help with acquiring a device for editing? Uh, so Whatever those questions may be, those are questions that we can ask participants or information we can collect in participants in the later release, which is version two. So this is something we're planning. It just takes a little longer because whenever we ask this kind of information of people, especially in Wikimedia, because there's so many values around about privacy um, and how we deal with the data of people, we need to be very careful and work with many teams to make sure we're doing it correctly. So that's why we're taking a little more time. We want to do it, but it's just a little more challenging in terms of how we think about the importance of privacy and data. So that's something that we'll be doing a little later, but it's something we definitely want to do and we're planning to do. Um, I see a question in French, so I'm going to pop in to my translator right now. Uh, can a participant register at the time of the event? Okay, oh, actually, I answered that already. Okay. Um, and so it looks like some of the main questions were answered in the chat. So now I will go to delete registration. So to delete registration, this is a more, you know, extreme action. I think it's probably less common. So this is something you would do if maybe you decide, I actually don't want registration as a part of my event. Um, so if this is the case, this is how you do this. Now, one thing I wanna share is for V0, 
If you delete registration, you can't restore registration again. We'll be looking into how to change this in the future, but for now, if you delete it, you can't add registration to the event page again. So for V0 testing, if you like your event that you created with registration, then you can just watch how I delete, but you don't have to go ahead and delete yourself, but I'll show how you do it. So you can go to my events, click on the three dots and then select delete registration. So you see that there's these different options, edit event, view event page, open registration, it could also say, as we talked about, close registration, and then the bottom is delete registration. So if you click delete registration, then of course it would delete. So I'm going to now go to my events. Oops, that did not work out well. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, I think it's your events. Is that no doing wrong? Name. Okay, maybe I mistyped something. So I'm going to pick edit-a-thon five, okay, and show how to delete it. So I go to delete, and it says you will lose all registration data, but the event page will not be deleted. So I can either click cancel or delete. I don't actually want to delete, I'm just showing you all how to do that. So I'll press cancel, but that is how you delete registration if you want to. So again, I look at the three dots, I choose delete registration. And if I want to delete, I press delete. If I do not want to delete, I press cancel. So I will press cancel. And now um, take your time, of course, to try this out yourself for one minute, and then we'll talk about the last part of the presentation which is how we're going to collect feedback from all of you. You can do that. Oh, oh, you can undo it. Okay. Thank you, Emanuele. I thought you couldn't undo it. That's so I'm going to delete. So now you see you deleted it. So I only have one registration listed here. I go to edit the font five. So you see there's no longer the registration header at the top because I've deleted it. Okay, so now let's talk about the last part of the presentation is, which is we want to hear from you. So we're building this for Wikimedians, for organizers, who people, people who do all the important work in creating events and organizing activities in the movement. This is for all of you. So we want to know what you want it to be. Do you like it? Do you want it changed? What changes do you want? How do you envision using it in the future? We really, really, really want to hear from you. And I mean this very sincerely. So for what we're asking of you is we would love if you test the feature. So some of you got to test the feature already today, but you maybe want to spend a little more time testing it yourself, playing with it, trying things out. I know me personally, I always like to spend some time on my own trying things out. So you can look at the documentation on MediaWiki, you can look at our slides, take your time to really test it out and see what you think. Then after you've tested it out, please share your feedback with us. There are two ways that you can share feedback. Um, option one is we have a feedback form. It's a Google form. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's currently available in Arabic, 
English and French, and we're also going to get translations for Swahili up. So this is the link to directly access the form. So it asks you some questions. Please provide as many details as you would like to share your thoughts. Um, so we have questions for you in the form. The second way you can share feedback is on the talk page. So if you prefer to share feedback on your talk page for the project on MetaWiki rather than the Google form, that's fine as well. So we also have the same questions, ex the exact same questions that are in the Google form also shared on the talk page. So you can answer and let us know what you think on the talk page as well. What we're asking is please share your feedback by Friday, August 5th. So that's two weeks from now. Um, the reason why we want the feedback in two weeks is, of course, you can share feedback at any time. It's not like if you give feedback later, we'll say, no, we can't take it. But we want feedback earlier because the earlier we get feedback, the more likely we are to be able to include some of those suggestions in earlier versions of the tool. The later we get feedback, the later we'll be able to respond to the feedback. Um, but of course, just share feedback when you can, but we're strongly um, encouraging people to check out the tool and share their feedback by Friday, August 5th. Um, if you have any questions while you're testing out, you can of course reach out to any of us in the team, any of the ambassadors will be happy to assist you. Um, next thing is please subscribe to our newsletter if you haven't already. So we have a newsletter where we post updates on uh, our work, on the project, on what's coming up, on office hours, and we strongly recommend you join it. Uh, and thank you uh, so for sharing the links, Amelda. And if you so, I'll go to the newsletter now. So this is the list. All you do is you add your name here, and then you'll also get messages sent via mass message to your user talk page. And lastly, uh, join our Telegram group. So we've created a multilingual Telegram group uh, where we share updates on our work. And we're also where organizers can meet each other and connect and talk about their resources. So again, this is multilingual. You can post any of your questions, any of your thoughts in any language. And we also share uh, updates ourselves in multiple languages, including Arabic, French, Swahili, and English. So please, please join it. Um, and if one of the ambassadors can share the link to the, or Melda share a link to the Telegram group in the chat, that would be great as well. And those are our main updates. Uh, so now, uh, now they've concluded the basic part of the presentation, I'm wondering what questions or comments or thoughts people have. What access, how to access the group for Francophones is one of the questions. Um, so uh, our Telegram group is multilingual. So it also includes people who uh, speak French. So people can ask questions in French um, and people will be able to also hear responses in French. We have two ambassadors who speak French. Um, and of course, there's other people in the group who speak French as well. And the link to the telegram was just shared. Thank you, Bashunda. So when asked about how to access the telegram group, the link was just provided. What other questions or comments or thoughts do people have? Don't be shy. <laughs> Uh, 
I have a question. Were people able to do the basic steps, like enable registration on their event page and register for an event as a participant? Also post the question in the group. Yeah. Yeah, so all your events. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, let's go back to beta. I'll just go to my trusty link. So um, there's remember there's a, so there's a special say special my events. These are my events. So I see here I have two events that I created. Or event registrations, I should say that I created. And I see yes, that oh, that editathon five was restored. So that's great. Will version one have any unify logins, for example, an existing Wikimedia account? So version one will be on not just beta wiki, right? It'll be on meta wiki. So um, when you're on meta wiki, you that's that you can have, you know, your you know, global kind of unified login. So it's it's definitely easier. You don't have to create <laughs> a new account if you already have a Wikimedia account like you had to today. We just had to do that because beta wiki is different. It's a test environment. Now, of course, we're planning just to release on one wiki first, which is meta wiki. So let's say you want to organize events on Swahili Wikipedia. Uh, we that might not be we might not have the extension enabled on Swahili Wikipedia, we're going to have to enable it on wiki step by step. It has to be kind of like a, you know, community process. But in terms of unified login, oh, we also see Emanuele wrote, this version also unifies login for what it's worth, but only for beta cluster accounts. Yes, thank you for clarifying. So beta clusters is just different. You can kind of think of it as its own separate thing. So there's unified login for beta. And then when we release to a live wiki, then you're going to have the unified login that you're more familiar with because that's through your Wikimedia accounts that you already have. So the answer in short is yes, this will be unified. And I saw one person write yes. And I think that was in response to my question, if they were able to register as an organizer and join as a participant. If so, that is great to hear Landry. Very, very happy about that. Any more questions, thoughts, feelings? Are we still have people joining? So for people who just joined, welcome. 
we're starting to reach the end of our presentation. But um, if you want to follow along with what we talked about today, here's the slides. And here's the documentation. And here is the feedback form. I saw one comment from Didier that translated to, you are great, I think. <laughs> I don't know who that was in reference to. That's to the group um, or to the team. Um, but we thank you and think, yes, exactly, George. You're wonderful uh, for you know coming to this office hour, being open to new tools, new experiences, being on this journey with us. So we really appreciate it. Thank you from Tochi. Great job. Thank you. Um, so again, uh, we hope you continue on this journey with us. This is just V0. We want to get your feedback. And then we also plan to release uh, V1 or version one and version two. Uh, so the last link I'll share is we have a page um, where we're going to be sharing updates on when we have other releases and other office hours. So this office hour today concludes our community office hours for V0. We had the one today and we had one this past Thursday. But if you watch this page, um, you can continue to get updates in your watch list about when we have other releases and other office hours. So what's coming up next is uh, after we get the feedback, uh, you can expect the version one release. And then after that, the version two release. Uh, we don't have dates yet for version one and version two, but when we do, we'll share them on this page. And this is what the page looks like. So we see here B0 release, and then updates on version one coming soon. Yeah, thank you, everyone. <laughs>